What's doing? It's Don doing stuff, and you're listening to the Roman Empire podcast. My guest on this episode was originally a dancer, dance teacher, graphic designer, photographer, and videographer. Um, she dubs herself a multidisciplinary designer. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Vienna Fornoles. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. How about you? I'm 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 pretty good. I'm pretty good. <laughs> this podcast is about art and travel and trying to find the connection between the two. I'm really excited to, you know, to talk to you about this stuff because you have done a lot of art. You've done a lot of traveling yourself. And I think to introduce Vienna a little more, so looking at your resume, it's so like extensive. You worked with, you worked with Sony, you worked with Adidas, you worked with Hype, you worked with, you've done TEDx, you've talked at UNSW, you've done all of these things like Mercedes Benz Fashion Week three years in a row. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Vienna, Vienna showed me all of this stuff, and she's like, "Oh, I've done this, 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 this," and so hundreds of projects. And, and she's just like, oh, yeah, just, you know, a few of these things that I've done. Um, you've done so much. What? I, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away with all of the work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think reflecting back, as I told you when I sent it through, yeah. it's a very humbling sort of track record, as you say, because when I think about it, to me, it's just work projects just come through or I try to find projects and you're only going to get yourself more better I guess grow more in your industry and your network mm -hmm. if you continue to build up a network that is filled with really genuine people yep. and really genuine quality of projects I touched upon this uh, with you Don literally a few hours ago just about knowing your own brand it really does a lot in the long run especially just listing out those names. <laughs> like for me, I'm just like, I think it's, I wouldn't say it's um, kind of desensitized by it, but I think it's just more so just being like, okay, that's checked off that list now. Yep. What more can I do now to bring to the table? Yeah. Um, yeah. I work with Sony quite a lot now with a, another startup business that, that are called Red Scope Films, check them out. Um, and uh, they are incredibly humble dudes that are in the same wavelength as I am. Yep. And I guess that just comes through to the fact that we all came from a same sort of background of uh, graphic design. And uh, coincidentally, we all came from the same uni, the same degree, just different ages. And I think it just really helped in the long run as to where these brands came in because you can't just be one thing anymore. Mm -hmm. That's where the industry, that's where the world is now. Yeah. Um, you have to be a, a multiple different things. Like you can be the master of an art or a particular medium, but what is the selling point now? Because people want to budget, people want to, you know, be a double whammy of things or a triple threat. Yeah. Um, it, it really helps in the long run with marketing, advertising, uh, knowing the digital landscape uh, because you're able to know what sells in person mm -hmm. and you know what's able to sell online. Uh, hence, those brands of what I just told you about, like that resume, you didn't know about that until I sent it yeah. <laughs> because I, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to be like, hey, everyone, like, I've, 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 this is me. <laughs> I've always known, I, I, I knew that you were a dancer and um, I've seen some of your photography work, but yeah, I didn't know that you've started doing all of these other creative type projects. Now, I, I, I've had a conversation <laughs> with, with people about, uh, I guess, typecasting or pigeonholing, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and I would have, I think, as an example of that, when I first thought of you, I was like, oh, okay, you're, you're a dancer and you do mm -hmm. a bit of photography. And so I'm putting those mm -hmm. labels on you, but then you have this plethora of work and, and plethora <laughs> of skills so much more than just a dancer. Is that something that, uh, has that landscape changed because of the internet or because of like social media and things like that, do you think? I think it's a it's a bit of both. Yeah. Having a background in dancing 
uh, really helped with how to perceive things both in front and behind the camera, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like you want to know, as a dancer, it helps to know what goes on behind the scenes and how things are perceived in the limelight. Mm -hmm. Um, Being behind the camera also helps about what people want to see. Uh, And then how that, as I said, circling back, what happens actually on stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you parallel all those processes with how photography works or video works, people usually just see the results. Um, But now there's such a big trend happening in the digital landscape that people want to see behind the scenes. People want to see and be acknowledged for being on this project or this project or even even doing this interview or podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, people want to see like, oh, they don't want to just hear things anymore sometimes. They actually want to pretend as if they were there. Mm-hmm. They want to see uh, the, the interactions, the, the reactions. Hence why I think dancing really helped because once you're on stage, you have to have a certain image I guess, to really pull off a certain emotion, yeah. just like when it comes to acting or modeling. Um, but as well with photography and video, it's our responsibility to uh, evoke those emotions as well. Yeah. Hence where everything is evolving mm-hmm. because it goes hand in hand now, um, BTS and the final results. So being a dancer, it really, really helped because I was in the industry for quite a while but it just came to a point where I was like, where where to next? Mm-hmm. Um, it is, realistically, it's really hard to make it as a dancer. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to take a strategic path back in uni and I was like, you know what? People may not see it back then, but now it's like such a big thing to be a part of the, the video photography world because of Instagram, because of Facebook, because the things go media, viral. Yeah. Social media is yeah. such a big thing now. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because uh, back in the day, people would be like, oh, whatever, like MySpace, <laughs> like Bebo. <MySpace. laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> and uh, then Facebook came along and then YouTube came along yeah. and then now everyone wants to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, and to think that it's a, it's a career, um, yeah. I, think, I think that speaks a lot now where yeah. everything is going. So... Yeah, I guess I guess that's where everything sort of lies now. Yeah. So you were saying that uh, social media and Instagram, photography, all of these creative things now can be a career. That's mm-hmm. that's somewhat mind blowing to me because it, before it was just like oh, I'm just gonna you know make stuff for fun, and now people actually mm-hmm. make, um, ma- you know, they actually make a living out of this, make a career. Yeah. Um, yeah. You were telling me that uh, you have a five-year plan. Do you want to talk a bit about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I think for myself, uh, from where I am at the moment, I think there's always uh, time for growth. And with how everything is going in the digital landscape, there's a term that everyone's coined now, having a remote lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I aim to have in the next five years or starting to now. Um, it comes down to that attitude of how it's not, oh, what was it? Like, if, oh, if not now, when? Yeah. So for myself, the remote lifestyle, because my skill set or my career at the moment, everything can be done absolutely anywhere. Yeah. If you really work into the nitty gritty um, of having a digital career, mm. uh, everyone wants something in marketing, in advertising and social media. That's probably one of the better sort of uh, careers everyone wants to have in the YouTube world or in the, <laughs> the Insta- apart from being Instagram famous, like, you know, in, in I think those sort of uh, careers are coined because uh, it's more accepted in the corporate world. Mm-hmm in a much more traditional sort of sense. So having a remote lifestyle for me, it's it's pretty much just saying, I want to work from absolutely anywhere in the world and network with anyone in the world uh, to help make their visions come true. Yeah. So I would love to work with like-minded people, with entrepreneurs, with startup businesses, with really big brands and create content that is fun that is diverse, that is pushing the boundaries. I think that's the dream that anyone would have. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and also have the luxury of traveling and being st- um, stable. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I actually met someone in LA and that she was mentioning to me, she has 
coined the remote lifestyle like she is the queen of remote lifestyle from what I know of at the moment and she just wrote an article recently where it gives you the downfalls of having a remote lifestyle um, where it is mentally draining where it is emotionally scarring at times because you are by yourself you are coaxed into um, having to survive on your own being alone and having things on Instagram doesn't necessarily mean that you are 100% happy and stable with where you are in life. I would love to have in the next five years a much more, I guess, confident sort of perspective of that. But that can only be done if you experience the remote lifestyle, Mm -hmm. fully immersed in it. Um, I guess for myself as well, being able to travel a lot, I'm, I'm a bit of a travel bug. I realize like I can't stay still. Like I don't know how to take a break. I honestly don't on my day off like probably last weekend I had to force myself to just be in bed and watch Netflix and to, like get Uber Eats sounds horrible and I made sure it, it was it was so bad <laughs> <laughs> but like no it was the first time in a long time that I had a break yeah and it was just like you have to really schedule in these sort of break times if you're in a remote lifestyle, you have to really also schedule in that mindset too. Yeah. Um, you can't always just be on the go, on the go, on the go. You have to find out what works for you, what's the best balance. Mm. Um, so I think for myself, five-year plan, coming back to it all, um, being, uh, I guess, really, I guess, consistent with my career mm-hmm. because it is a career that's very fast-paced. Um and the hustle is so real, <laughs> yeah. um, but I love it. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could be in any other job um, in a corporate life where I have to really sit still. It's mm-hmm. more I, I love being on. Uh, I love doing things as they go wherever it takes me. So I guess the confirmation of having April last month uh, traveling traveling on the go where I was in a hotel pretty much every week. In April, like it was, I'm not going to lie, it was hard um, because they were literally 24-hour trips, Mm -hmm. but it was a good insight as to, for myself, what made me happy. So I was like, I like being on a plane, but then when you come back, you're like, I hate the plane because it's like, (laughs) it's so draining coming back. Yeah. Um, But yeah, five-year plan, create that remote lifestyle where everything is consistent, uh, contained, and uh, comfortable, I guess. Yeah. I, I have a friend who has recently moved to Singapore and since coming to Singapore, he's uh, traveled. I mean, when, when you come to Singapore, it's so close to other Asian countries that you can mm-hmm. you can just hop over to Thailand or to, to like, you know, Vietnam or something on a weekend. Now, he's done so much traveling since coming to Singapore. And when I, when I caught up with him, he was saying to me, he's like, dude, I'm so sick. I'm so sick of traveling. I have to pack my bag tonight and I'm just, you know... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the there's this yeah it, it takes a certain mindset and it takes uh you know you, you really need to be ready for the unexpected when you're doing remote things when you're when you're traveling a lot and you're mm-hmm. doing things mm-hmm. that that aren't uh i guess the usual nine to five type thing mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um yeah uh there's th- there are two topics in there that i that, that we can go and talk about uh Yep. There's the the readiness to record or film something when you're mm-hmm. when you're on holiday or when you're when you're on, when when you're on a trip because you're a photographer and a videographer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How many times or how many spare batteries do you bring with you? Like what's what is in your kit mm. when you travel? Oh, I think it just depends. It's so hard because I've traveled recently for work, so I always anticipated myself and uh, the team that I work with uh, to know what gear to bring. Mm. But sometimes they spring it on you and it's literally uh, like a few days beforehand yeah. and it's like, oh my God, we have to have all this gear with us. Like, And it's really full on because for a 24-hour trip, we pack more gear than clothes. Like <laughs> we pack, it's so, it's ridiculous. It's like we have like three bags check in. They're like massive. And then we have our lenses and our cameras with us because God forbid if something happens to it, that's like 20K of gear. Yep. Um, we don't want to lose it. Like what happens if it ends up in Norway? Like it's just so chaotic. Yeah. Um, but I think for myself, I always carry, uh, I guess, my SD cards with me. Um, and I guess for gig wise, I always have Sony 
gear with me, just whatever I can get. Um, all my cannons. Shameless plug. I think that's like, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think that's like a personal conflict because <laughs> I'm like, oh, my cannons and my Sony's. Um, but I think as well, um, it's just more so what you're comfortable with. Mm. Um, but um, which which brings me to, I guess, a next sort of uh, semi topic. Um, people get confused between a remote lifestyle and the freelance life. Right. Um, yeah, because remote lifestyle is more, I guess it, it's traveling. It's constantly everywhere. That's, that's, that. I guess that's the tune of it all. Freelance life, you give away your soul. <laughs> like it's 24 seven. Um, you are on call technically speaking. Like okay. you have to meet deadlines. Like it's not nine to five where you clock off after five o'clock. Hmm. It's, Literally, my life is I go to work or I go to the studio or I can wake up and just do work at home. Then I get back to the studio or come home and I'm still working. Yeah. Like it's your your deadlines are your client's deadlines or their time. So they could call you up on a weekend or something and just be like, hey, I need this due by Monday. And it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, Oh, my goodness. So. Yeah, I think I think that's where you have to anticipate, not just gear-wise, whenever you have to travel somewhere. Yeah. It's anticipating if a ni- another client comes in and they push up another project or another budget or something for you that you have to really wrap your head around. Yeah. So it's just being able to be adaptable. And you're right, like it's not for everyone. Mm. Um, but if you like to think on your feet and if you anticipate <laughs> like a lot of silver linings and a lot of hard work, it does pay off. Um, but I will say straight up front, it's not for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. You could technically be a freelancer and also have a remote life. I mean, is that something that, that could happen? Because mm. you could um, just be working all of the time, but yeah. <laughs> be in different places all of the time. Uh, actually, 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 yeah, I think, correct me, but like, yeah, it, it can be done because my friend in LA, she is a gaming and tech reviewer yeah. like she writes stuff for the Huffington Post and um, Lifehacker and she literally made a network where she was able to work in Japan for a bit and then literally she was moving to another country two months down the track in Europe and but she was still writing for all these uh, newspapers and online uh, I guess journals and everything mm. but it didn't matter where she was she was doing it because she she wanted to experience it and she wanted to be like if I can do the remote lifestyle, I can also pursue my freelance business at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it was hard, and um, but it is possible. You just have to be darn like invested into it and yeah. be okay with that as well. Yeah. You you were talking about uh, going to LA. Um, do you want to talk about your trip? Was that something for? Was that for a project or was that just for a holiday or vacation? What was the? <laughs> Uh, it was holiday. <laughs> oh, yeah. My first time to the US. And I went there uh, with a few friends. And it was absolutely amazing. I fell in love with LA. It was the only place I went to. And a lot of people were badgering me on about that because they were like, rookie mistake. You should be going everywhere. And I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> like, at least I went. Um, but, oh, my gosh. LA blew me away. I fell in love with it. I never fall in love with countries. I've traveled quite a bit, but LA was like, the vibe was just a killer. Like, um, I just can't comprehend how the creative level is out there. Like we thought out here in Australia, it's like, it's all right. But then you go to America or any other country, it's like, boom, you guys suck. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know? um, it really humbles you to work harder out yeah. there um i networked quite a bit i was uh i linked up with a mutual friend of mine and uh funnily enough we hung out and he took me around and then now i'm off to do a gig with him in the philippines so it just <laughs> Wait, i feel what? la yeah 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 so i'll, LA, I'll probably touch up on that LA, yeah 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 like it's just uh, people in LA, I found that they are just down a hundred percent to make any project mm. or dream come to life. And um, yeah, I was like, one week is not enough. I mean, I did all the touristy things like Disneyland. Woo! <laughs> like, yeah, as like, you would. Need to as go you back would. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, did Universal, did the shopping and everything. Mm. But I was like, it was such an eye opener when it came to networking because you just didn't know who you bump into, mm. and um how much it will 
uh, I guess, be a good investment into that friendship long term. Uh, because then when you go back there, you have a connection to either just chill with or to make something happen. Yeah. Um, so definitely want to go back. My aim is to go back in November uh, for a bit and probably do a bit more holidaying, but more so work <laughs> this time. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's just, um, it's an incredible space to be a part of. Yeah. I like that you went there for a holiday and then all of a sudden you got inspired <laughs> You're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. I like that. I really do. Yeah, yeah. I actually ended up booking a gig on my last oh. day. So <laughs> what happened was there was a mutual friend again. I had met her here in Fashion Week last year. And uh, she was there in LA. And it was a first, like we've been talking by Instagram, as you do. And she found out I was in LA. She was in LA. And on the last day, she was like, hey, let's meet up. I need a photo shoot. I was like, girl, I got you. <laughs> so um, she booked me in. And this was a few hours before my flight going back to Sydney. <laughs> so I woke up hella early. We shot at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Wow. Made a lot of friends because, like, Australians, we talk a lot. So we're just yes, we do. having the time yes, of our lives. Yeah, we, we have the time of our lives making friends with security there and everything. <laughs> and, yeah, it just ended up. Like, yeah, I just ended up booking a photo shoot with her and she loved the photos. And yeah. I was like, well, when you come back to Sydney, let's tee up again. And she was like, yeah, okay, cool. I'll see you then. Um, but it just goes to show the, the mindset that people have over there. Like, they're just down no matter how well you know them. I know that sounds like really the, the borderline of stranger danger, but like, <laughs> be smart, be smart with this old kids. <laughs> like, you know, um, but yeah, it, it just got me so many opportunities and blessings while I was over there. And that's why I was so hooked. Mm. So when I came back from LA, I was just in this rut. I was just like, now what? <laughs> Sydney sucks. No, it doesn't. But like, you know, <laughs> like where's Disneyland? Like I want In-N-Out burgers. Like it's just, it's an entirely different vibe. But mm. I, yeah, yeah, LA was good. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about um, like networking and, and, and making friends and having some like people to chill with and stuff. <laughs> is, 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 do you ever think about uh, the... I guess the superficiality of me of networking, oh. like mm, when you yes. when when people are like, hey, I do this, and they're networking. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about, uh, you know, maybe this person just wants to hang out with me just for, you know, uh, just so that they can use me as a photographer or, uh, like you know, they can use me as uh, whatever. Like a stepping stone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does that does that um, does that ever come to mind? It does. It does quite a bit because I feel like whatever you do in this sort of spectrum, it's a very double-edged sword. Mm. Uh, the more bigger you get, you don't know what's genuine. I know that's really cliche, but you come across it a lot. I came across it a lot in fashion weeks. Like you see it when you um, when you meet people, the influencers or the famous people. And as a job as a street style photographer or runway, it's our job to fulfill the role of getting certain images for a magazine mm -hmm. or a certain brand ambassador. And you can tell who's actually really genuine about meeting people and who's genuine, oh, like, yeah, meeting people, but also who's just using you. Right. And um, I'm pretty blessed or thankful in a, in a sense where my network is very genuine mm -hmm. and uh, have kept around a very like-minded uh, individuals in my circle. Yeah. Uh, and I guess with that, like you're able to tell, especially for myself, because I'm still, I'm still a small fish. Um, but I, I don't know, like, I think I can sort of tell already who is using me, but at the same time you have to be, it sounds weird. You have to be able to play the game too. <laughs> so, yeah. um, which is the reality of any sort of creative business um but you have to be quite wise as to who you collaborate with and who you actually want to invest and believe in mm. so i've been teeing up with quite a few musicians lately like that's a market that i'm starting to look into because i feel that the sydney scene um does need to grow more in their social media presence um for that for certain musicians and i generally want to invest into that and help them out because i believe in it yeah. It's not necessarily to be like, oh, you're you've got so many followers or whatever, and um, <laughs> you know, get my name out there. But I think it's just more so. You're, I feel very genuine and believe that they can make it. Um, yeah. If I'm able to help them out in some way, 
that helps. Mm. Um, but it's like vice versa. If, if someone wants to invest into me, I always say thank you back. So I just believe in that essence of saying thank you and being really genuine about what you do because people can feel it straight away mm. um, when you're just there to be like, it's a numbers game or, you know, how many followers do you have? And um, yeah, you can see it all the time on Instagram, paid partnerships. Um, you know, who actually uses these products? <laughs> so um, it's the same sort of perception that you would have when work-wise. Mm. Um, but I guess I've been in the industry for quite a while, still a small fish. I don't think of myself as a big sort of person. Um, but I feel I'm pretty lucky in a sense where a lot of people around me have been in the game longer than I have. And reputation is absolutely everything yeah. like once you don't deliver a certain project bam there goes your reputation or if you do something at a gig and it it's just massively ripple effect Any, anything can go viral in this sort of term but your reputation can go just like that as yeah. well yeah. so yeah i think yeah. i think what's really important with creative projects is that idea of um like the, the collaborative side of it like, mm, you, you, mm. like when if you feel like the other person isn't being collaborative, then you know already that yeah, maybe they're not in this for the right reasons, or yeah. you, know, you know, yeah, um, yeah. And I think, and I think when it comes to doing projects, uh, things should feel a little bit organic, even though you kind of plan things out. Yeah, yeah. I think you just need people that are very passionate <laughs> about yeah. what they do. Yeah. Um, I work with a few people, so uh, a good person that springs to mind is my friend PL. Um, he's a very producer sort of role, and I'm just very like free-spirited in the club, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have this idea. And he's like, all right, tell me. <laughs> and, um, he doesn't <laughs> care because like he knows that I'm like, just trust me on this idea because even if it sounds really crazy right now, like we're going to get like a hose of rain and something like that. And he's like, I don't know what you're saying, but okay, like I'll trust you on it because it's a genuine work friendship that mm -hmm. happens and it cultivates such a, a genuine energy on set. Mm -hmm. um, hence, I guess what you're saying that collaboration and good energy is absolutely everything as well yeah. because once that sort of wavers, you're just like, should we work again together? Um, but if you have something special, um, you know, with clients or other brands or, you know, work friends and everything or just friends in general, um, it would be such a sucky thing to cut that off and just be like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> bye. But, but it's, it's part of life as well. It's, yeah. it's always a learning curve with these things. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, PL actually, uh, PL and I actually know each other from a long time ago. Um, <gasps> oh, really? <laughs> he used to play, yeah, he used to play guitar for me like ages ago. <laughs> uh, Time to bring that back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ask him about it. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, I lost my train of thought because of yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to PL. <laughs> <laughs> Shout outs to PL. Um, no, we, we were talking about the, like, the nine to five versus the, the remote lifestyle type thing. Now, mm -hmm. you and I are uh, both Filipino and we come from, you know, fairly... <laughs> traditional conservative Filipino families. Um, uh. And there's, there's that, there's that uh, stereotype where a lot of Filipinos, will, you know, they'll, they'll be uh, accountants or they'll be nurses or they'll be, you know, uh, mm -hmm. anything other than creative. Uh, actually, that's, that's probably not true because there's so many creative Filipinos. Um, yeah. Are, you, are your family the type that, like, did, did they want you to, to when you said hey well, i want to be a dancer or hey i wanted to do creative projects and and live this remote lifestyle what was their reaction to your your decision i'm not gonna lie it's it's really hard <laughs> um it's because I guess one, it sounds weird to say but this is the reality of coming from a very traditional family i'm a girl i am a woman working in a very male dominated industry mm -hmm. 
um, these industries and these careers require you to do networking mostly at night, work late into the night, like finish midnight or even past that for on being on set or hustling through the day and not sleeping and everything. And it's a very double-edged sword because um, since they come from a very olden generation mindset, they can't really comprehend the the essence of doing things for exposure or doing things sometimes because you need to do it um, not necessarily for the money, but because it's a good stepping stone to get somewhere yeah, else. Yeah. Um, but it it's so hard. It it took me a long time, and it still takes me quite a long time to <laughs> comprehend. Um, um, for them to comprehend what I do, mm. they didn't really understand what I did until even to this day. They just think I just take photos. <laughs> um, but so so I have to luckily enough spit out and be like Sony or Adidas. Cronides or something that they can actually relate to but even then they don't really understand what I do for them <laughs> so it's just more so I have to always back it up to be like keep them in the loop in some way or another positively like I'll send through the end results of all the photos I've taken or the videos that we've made or an ad that we've been a part of um and hopefully, hope for the best, <laughs> um, that, that it was all worth it in the end. Yeah. It's so much more harder. I Actually, you know what? When I was traveling quite a bit in April, I think they were just like, it's okay because it was a 24-hour trip. But they just didn't understand how debilitating it was um, not sleeping during the trip because it was these really crazy turnarounds and then they would message and be like make sure you're sleeping make sure you're doing this and I'm like I can't <laughs> like I have a deadline to do this is for the media <laughs> like you don't understand and they'll be like you know it's a double-edged sword of being like well you chose this life and it's just yeah. like <laughs> yeah. no it's a very it 100% it's so hard being in a very filler dominated society where I, I guess where I come from obviously in the west yeah. um where I guess a lot of the Filipinos, obviously enough, where singers or dancers and actors and everything, and it, it's hard to prove it sometimes because in the corporate life, that's where stability is yes. wavered to be. You know, this it's, is where your life has to be. It's, um, it's the proven it, line. It's the proven path yes. of success, yes. rather. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it, and it's funny because not unless you become famous, that's when everything's like, oh, yep, you're fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're sick now and uh, you've been on TV you're successful uh, and, and it's funny because in this day and age um, it's the landscape is ever changing but having to change the mindsets of these traditional values or the traditional path is still yeah. exhausting to yeah. evolve um, and I, I find it so tough mm. but it's something that I am so passionate about and it takes a lot of guts and a lot of um, yeah. I, I guess a really good support system to be around you. So I guess for myself, a lot of my friends are my the the closer sort of net of support networks out there because they understand the same feelings. Mm. Um, we're all in the same sort of creative sort of spiel where you're not really successful until you've made it, um, no matter how long that <laughs> will be. But our little stepping stones of success for, um, successes are such a big, um, you know, a big fist pump in the air because yeah. it's just like yeah we've we've done one more step um, and we've proved it to either the traditional mindset that it can be done. Remote lifestyles is is such a it's still something that people cannot comprehend. It doesn't matter if what uh, I guess nationality you come from. It's just more so the older generation. Mm -hmm. um, because you see so many successful people now. Like, I don't know how I would explain it if I became, like, a successful YouTuber to be like, hey, mom, like, I'm going to Japan, like, for to be an ambassador <laughs> for someone, like, to pay me to take photos of me in front of a statue. Like, they would probably be like, and a lot of other Filipino parents would just be like, yeah. are you sure that's real? It's, <laughs> it's hard for them to fathom. Real? Yeah, it's hard for them to fathom yeah. uh, the, because they, they think it's not a real career. It's not um, a real job. It's like, oh, you, you can and sing, that's great, uh, but <laughs> how are you going to pay the bills? It. Like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Get another job for stable income. And I cross that so many times, yeah. like, and it's exhausting. It is so emotionally debilitating, but yeah. um, it just comes down to how badly you want it in the long term because you can see it and you can sense it yourself that it is going to have 
a bigger outcome mm-hmm. and, a, and a bigger, somewhat to an extent, like, you know, like, up yours, like, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> like, you know, it's everyone else in our generation can see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I can sort of prove to that because it's like how many people around us in, in our sort of demographic, our age demographic, because they're just like, oh, you're doing this, you're doing this. I'm like, yes. But in the eyes of the older generation, it's just like, are you just gallivanting? <laughs> like, gallivanting. Just taking <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's hard. It is so hard. But you have to try and have that patience to yeah. educate, even if it's so punching into the gut. Um, mm. It is a career. And I need to state that so loudly right now because it is a damn career <laughs> to, <laughs> to be in, um, being a photographer, a videographer, because... People need that for marketing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. 70%, 70 to 80% yeah. of marketing is now video, yes. video and photography content. So if that's not a real job. <laughs> it, it, it is a legitimate line of business. It, that is what it yes, is. It is. It is. It is. So if someone's got to do it. I'm more than happy to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, th- I, think, I think for me growing up, uh, I, I was, you know, I, I, I grew up and I was told that I was a good singer and I, I, I could sing and, and all of these things. But I was also told that I shouldn't try to make it a career. So there's, I, yeah. I, I think I struggle with that every now and again. Like the, a part of me is like, yes, I, I, I'm, I, I believe that I have a, a, a bit of mm-hmm. talent in this, but no, I'll probably not make it because it's not a career. Like that's the, the something that's etched in my head. Mm-hmm. And I think that's 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 the struggle there, being a creative, that you have yeah. to believe in your art. You have to believe in exactly yes. what you're going for. Yes, yeah. exactly. And it, it is quite tough if you want the approval to make sure you have the support yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of those around you. And it's so hard. Um, but as I said before, and as you would know, it's you have to really have a very like-minded um, group of people around you to really push you on to be like, no, you're doing great. Or like, yeah. you know, you need to improve on this in order to get to your dream, to come back and be like to your family or to the traditional mindset of older generations to be like, yes, I do make money from this. <laughs> like, yeah. I am stable. Um, I do travel and I'm not gallivanting. Not like, gallivanting. you know, it, <laughs> it's with reason and purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 You, you, were talking, you were talking earlier about... Um, you know, being being a female in a male-dominated industry. Um, mm. Do you want to talk a bit more about that? Like, I mean, I, I, because obviously, I have no idea what that's like. Ah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's, it's. I, I think it's either two ways. It's either spoken or unspoken about mm-hmm. that sort of sense of it being an issue. I think I don't look at it as an issue. I look at it as a challenge that. I love to prove more so whenever I am on a project or I am on set. Um, It's just because it just makes you want to really be like, there's no sense of gender when it comes to the creative world. That's where people thrive on because you're able to really, truly express yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, You're not judged on that. People are able to resonate with you. That's the industry where where people are able to relate to. That's why everything is so magnetic when it comes to songs and lyrics and art because when people see or watch it, they're just like, that's me. (laughs) But they don't ever be like, that's a male, (laughs) you know? (laughs) It's it's like non-biased in a sense. Mm. Um, And I guess being female in a male-dominated team as well, I love it because it just makes me be like, I earned this spot to be here. Um, my skill set um, is good, always room for improvement, as I said. Um, but it just makes you want to be like, thank you for making it equal and thank you for wanting to really push the industry still because I know a lot of kick-ass women <laughs> in this industry and they are amazing at what they do. Um and I think it's just one of those female or womanly instincts to be like, let's stick together and really thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that could also be said if we can actually cultivate it for to be for both genders, to for this industry to be like, let's work together and make a kick-ass project or campaign. Yeah. Um, and I've been lucky enough to be part of projects that are not biased against gender 
or teams where they don't really think about that. Mm. It's more just about if anything is going to be judged, it's more about what you deliver and the quality of what you deliver yep. um, because that all comes down to work ethic, not gender. Mm -hmm. um, hence the whole sense of reputation. Not Your reputation isn't going to be tainted because it's like, oh my gosh, you're a male. <laughs> like, yeah. How dare you <laughs> be I mean, on set today, you know? Yeah. Um, things, yeah. things nowadays are a little more progressive. There's a little, there's uh, more and more mm. gender equality. So yeah, you mentioned something earlier about doing projects for exposure. Now, mm -hmm. I, I think that I, this is a bit of a sticking point for me because, uh, you know, I guess growing up and uh, being a singer and uh, not really knowing the industry when I was younger, when people were like, hey, you should perform at this event or do this, or they'd, yeah. they'd get you to do particular projects. And then if you ask for, you know, remuneration, they'll be like, oh, you get exposure with it. You know, mm. and, and and the older that I got, the more I was like, well, I can't really pay for, I can't really pay bills with exposure. So what's yeah. the, yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you manage or how do you navigate that type of landscape where it's just like, hey, let's do this where everyone does, does everyone expect like a free ride or what, mm. how, how do you navigate that sort of landscape? It's tough because I guess I kind of learnt from the get-go when I first started going into this industry. So when I was in uni in my last year, um, I made sure to do a lot of internships and networking opportunities. Mm. And that internships, obviously enough, it's for free. <laughs> so I did a lot of them in a lot of different um, industries. So I did PR at one point. I did a fashion one. I did graphic design that entailed photography, like, and it was all for free. And it just got to a point as well at the end of it. Luckily enough, I got, I got a job out of it. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you an example where the lines are kind of blurred. So I did my first fashion Mercedes Benz Fashion Week. Um, how, I forgot how many years ago now, but it was a few years back. And I remember it being like that opportunity just fell into my lap randomly. Uh -huh. A friend of mine couldn't make it from Melbourne and he had referred me to this Melbourne fashion magazine and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I just want to be in Mercedes Benz fashion week. And the hours for that are grueling. Like it is absolute, it's tired by the fourth day, everyone in the media pit, we just all hate each other. Not really hate each other, but, you know, everyone's just tired. Everyone's so tired because you're meeting these ridiculous um, deadlines as well. Yeah. And um, I remember sitting there with a friend of mine who was also doing the same gig as me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing this for free. We got this opportunity for free um, to represent, but our photos were going to go everywhere. So in the Daily Mail and everything. And I was like, this is a good good counter. I can work with this. Yep. yep. Starting in my career. Good. Yep. And where it kind of clicked to me and I've all, I'll never forget this. I was in the media pit for one of the biggest show, um, runways. And, uh, this guy from, I forgot what media it was one of the big ones. So in the media pit, let me give you a hierarchy of it. Um, you know, you have your channel nine, channel tens, the big guys, uh, the daily mail, mm -hmm. the Australian, the Sunday morning Herald, like you have all of them in there with you. Yep. And then like Getty Images as well. And then there's me. <laughs> like, and it's just like, you know, you have your your bottom tier ones. And I remember talking to this uh, this guy and he was just like with his big camera. He's like, oh, sweetie, how you how much are you getting paid? I'm getting paid 10000 an image. How about you? Wow. I look at him and I'm like, yeah. Wow. And I was just like, nothing. <laughs> like, like, I'm not getting paid for any of it. But I'm just happy to be here. That was my answer. Yeah. And he looks at me. He's like, "We all got to start somewhere." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And uh, <laughs> I'll never forget it. But I became so good. Like I became really good friends with everyone in the media pit. It's better that way. Yeah. Because then you like get better spots in the media pit too. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but it was such a big turning point. I'll never just forget that little memory because. Uh, you have to have more pros to it in terms of exposure. Mm -hmm. um, my photos were used a lot that year for the Daily Mail and also, uh, I, I forgot what show it was. So it was for the Tony Matifsky. Sorry if I say it wrong. He's a high-end fashion designer. 
and he did a collaboration with Lenovo um, mm-hmm. and that was the clients that I had to take photos of for this massive runway. So they were enhancing digital tech gadgets in their runway and that was the brief I was given for this one. I couldn't miss it. And my photos were splattered everywhere. And I was like, yes, didn't get 10 grand, but (laughs) I got images on the internet. And I was pretty happy with that. So it's a give and take. And it is still blurry to this day. I think now I've been around for quite a bit where I can actually back myself up now to not do anything for free unless I initiate it to be like, I want to invest into this musician because I believe in them or I want to invest into this fashion brand because I actually love their fashion and they're just a startup. Um, I would love to do that and offer my services because it's it's different. Um, but anything that comes for free now, I, I like to make sure that I initiate it because I am busy and people are busy these days. Yeah. Um, but I don't mind investing into people that do want to learn, do want to you know get somewhere but it has to be a very genuine sort of rapport or belief in one another. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm. awesome. And I, I think, yeah, that, 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 that is a good point that if you are going to do something for free, it's like, okay, what's, what is the offset of that? What is the benefit that I can get from mm-hmm. that? Because Mercedes Benz fashion week is a pretty good <laughs> offset. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> like, oh, so what did you do? What did you do on the weekend? Oh, I, I shot for, um, you know, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week. What? <laughs> yeah. What? I still, I still have those moments, and it's, it's funny because of, I think you would get it done. A lot of my friends, or like I think as well for you, different groups of friends where they do consist to the nine to five. And then you have that random person where it's just like, I just came back from LA or, you know, I just, I just shot a campaign for Sony. Like, um, and either people think that you're trying to boast, but it's not even the case. It's Mm. just that it's your work. Like it's a very sort of awkward situation to be in because you're trying to be humble. But then when people ask you about what you do, it's just like, oh, yeah, like, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, I did this or, or something. And I, I'm not going to lie. I still struggle to it to this day. Mm. But it's a, as I said before, it's a very double-edged sword because you have to really push out what you do out there in the digital landscape and social media mm-hmm. because if you don't, you don't have a, a digital uh, track record. Mm-hmm. You know, people that want to invest into you, like big brands, they need to see what you're doing. Otherwise, if you don't, they're not going to believe it. You have to really back it up and take the initiative to back it up, especially in this career. Yeah. Because if people want to headhunt you or if they want to make sure that you represent their brand in some way or another, um, they have to see the quality of content that you produce because you actually believe in your work and you think it's it's one of, it's it's good quality, top quality content. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess talking about that, there's this idea that, you know, um, I think, Gary Vaynerchuk said it that you know just mm. content is king you just keep I think he just keeps putting out more and more and more, more and more content um, mm. do you think it's better to just blast out everything or do you feel like it's better to kind of slowly release your work or like you know, take time I think it depends on the type of person you are mm. I'm that type of person where I like to produce content on the go and upload it straight away. It's sometimes <laughs> bad, <laughs> but because like I kind of know my followers per se or my audience, yeah. um, I've kind of I wouldn't say I've played myself into a influencer, but not really. Only because I want to be relatable. But there's a essence of what can you be uh, without a person knowing you yet. Right. The way I like to look at it with content, it's like online content to me is like a a handshake. It's a digital handshake to know someone. Um, You don't even need to know them yet because you've already seen their layout or you've seen their images that they posted and you think in your head already like, oh, they're they're pretty or they must be funny or something. That's your first impression straight away. Hence why I like to post content on the go because it just goes to show that you're still trying to build your friendships with your followers <laughs> in a sense um, and you still care about them. Yeah. When it comes to posting frequently, I used to do it a lot. I do it every now and then, make sure I post at least once every day or once every few days mm-hmm. um, because as Gary said, like it's you have to have 
consistency. Consistency is key. Um, hence your digital foot, uh, digital foot, digital footprint. Um, about how much time you can make for things that you're passionate about and things that are actually for work. Mm. I, I guess I came up with this recent quote that I've been using on people recently. I'm like, if you can complain about something that's work-related, you can damn right schedule in some time for yourself. And for myself, producing content is what I love to do. That's why I'm like, I can't switch off. It's so yeah. bad. So like I'll, I'll post these random little vlogs that don't even make sense sometimes on my Insta story or something like that because it generally makes me happy and it's content that I would like to see. Mm. So I kind of do a testing sort of ground with my own audience um, and then try to see what would actually work in a bigger landscape, let's say, for example, for Adidas or for Sony. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the content I want to see and it's going, getting good traction, can it work for another brand or for another ambassador or influencer? Yeah. So I think it just depends on your end game as to why you want to post content. For me, it's strategy. For me, it's also, uh, I guess, research in a sense. Uh, but it also is a way, because I'm always busy, it's a it's a way for me to um, keep people in the loop. Yeah. Uh, so when I do see them, they're like, "Oh yeah, you just you just came back from somewhere." I'm like, "Oh yes, you saw my Instagram, didn't you?" <laughs> like, you know, like, "Oh, you should rest. You've been working a lot." I'm like, "Yes, you saw my recent post, didn't you?" <laughs> like, you know. Um, but I guess it's it's a matter, as I said, it's a matter of what the purpose is to yeah. your content at the, end of the day. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a little bit of like strategic. Uh, mm. planning for work mm. it's, it's a little bit of research and development for your for your role yeah but at the same time yeah. it's just yeah. it's just sharing because the, for the sake of yeah <laughs> because i can because <laughs> <laughs> it's fun <laughs> vienna thank you so much for coming onto the podcast and and talking to us today uh i i think uh, are, are there any things that you want to plug like do you want to plug your social media of course you want to plug your social media i mean <laughs> Not just for research, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I'll plug a few now that you've given me the opportunity. Um, I have a website. It is icviennamarie.com. Uh, my Instagram handle is at vnrxo. And uh, that's all I'll plug for now. But if you'd like to see, if you'd like to see more, <laughs> just like that follow button, and <laughs> we'll, we'll take it from there. Well, you know, whatever works, whatever. And what what's the next like? What's the next big project that you have coming up? Oh, if you're got, allowed to talk about it. I've got a few. I, I am. I am. So I've got a few coming up. So one in the works is covering X4, which is Coltrix. Um, they're a massive managing event that's coming down to Sydney uh, in two weeks' time. So that's going to be a massive one in the ICC and uh, Taronga Zoo. So that should be fun to, wow. to nice. hammer it through. It's, it's physically draining, but I love it and it's adrenaline rush. Another one I'm doing is going off to Jollibee um, in the Philippines. <laughs> like, it's so random saying this. Um, so Jollibee, uh, their marketing team, uh, the marketing company that handled Jollibee's uh, advertising, they're holding a summit in the Philippines um, at the end of this year, and I'm going out there to film it. So wow. that's, that's really <laughs> pre Jollibee, huh? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Can you bring some um, back? No. Can you bring some back with you? Well, I don't know, but I will test that out. And if you see me on border security, <laughs> you'll know why. So, <laughs> so for my fellows out there. <laughs> All good. Good. Anyway, thanks again for coming to the show. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> this is Don Doing Stuff. Hope you guys are doing well. Cheers.